Hi everyone, Vivian, the marketing manager of Wymo. Let's take a look at the blade deck. Now, most other robotic mowers have their blades in the underbelly, right? Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. The difference between that and the Limo 1 is being at the front. Now, why is that? The front deck is our unique design. But honestly, this kind of rotating blade it wasn't our first uh, design. Actually, from the very beginning, we have re this kind of scissor-like reciprocating blade. So we just uh, put them in the front. Or we go to this approach because we didn't like the swing blade that used uh, by most other robotic movers because they are not efficient enough to handle the tough and the thick brass. So we were trying to find a better solution that can solve the drill pinpoint. Those kind of scissor-like blades, they do deliver a good moving result on the dry grass. But once the grass gets a little bit wet, the grass just uh, get clogged. We optimized it for several times, um, but still we couldn't address the issue very well. We have to give it up and then we are still keep the front deck design because it's very easy to maintain. After your moving station, you just uh, flip it over and clean it mm, with uh, mm, a hose. Right, right. And another important point, this blade deck is not fixed to the body. It can follow the terrain very well. The right, on the wells so. are always contact with the ground. Mm. So the cutting height will be uniform and moving surface will be very even. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So one thing I'm, I'm very curious about is like with the with, this, with the high speed of the mulching blade, about is it 6,000 RPMs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with like a peak output of like 1,200 watts, like how do you ensure safety? Well, it's rotating very fast, but it can stop in under one second. About the uh, safety, Lemo 1 is packed of the sensors. Let me show you. Oh, wow. Okay. You can see here it has two cameras mm. and the stereo camera has a semantic recognition, which means it can perceive the environment. And it also has five ultrasonic sensors and three in front and two in the back. So it right. can detect the obstacles to avoid right, bumping right, into right. them. And also for the blade front, it has a bumper in front. And also in the Omo wells, we just saw them, there are off-ground detectors. Mm -hmm. And also the, here is a, a stop button for emergency. So any of the bumper or emergency or off-ground uh, sensors are triggered, the blade will just immediately... It will yeah. just immediately stop. Yeah, it yeah, will immediately yeah, yeah. stop. And also we have a uh, um, brake hiding in the tractor tree that can prevent slip from the steep slope. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So. That, and that brings me nicely on to the next, my next question, actually. So, you know, you, you decided to use tracks. Is it true that you can go up to 45 degree slopes? We have some video about that. We have some proof. And, but, but with, you know, with this like really high capacity, um, what are your thoughts on like how it can preserve and not damage any lawns? We get that question a lot because uh, people, they want to know after a long time of use, will the truck damage the lawn? Um, can you put your hand on the table? And this one? Okay. And this one? And Right. Which one is more stressed to your... I, the second one. The second one. <laughs> That's the one, yeah. you know. Yeah. The, the contacting surface is larger. It just spread out the stress, mm. right? So the second solution is just like the wells. And it's a um, point contact. But this one is just a bigger surface. Mm, so it's actually cause less damage it to your lawn. And we're also fine-tuning the, the shape of the, of the tracks and the lens the ways to minimize the stress on the grass. Right, yeah. I see, of course, yes, you spread the load, it makes much more sense that way, of course. Yeah. Since Built to Last is basically the, the, the core design and engineering principle behind this, how do you ensure that the Limo 1 is really, truly sturdy, durable, and really made to last? Yeah, we know that Built to Last is a must-have feature for many of our backers, and we pay a lot of attention from the very beginning of our design. Mm -hmm. So this is a skeleton of Limo 1, mm -hmm. and you can see this is a, a one-piece die-casting aluminum alumni frame which is used uh, in the sports cars. Right. <laughs> when we design it, we'll also use uh, FEM analysis for the collision simulation and also optimize the strength 
against uh, the job and the uh, vibrations. We uh, recently up upgrade our um, I, uh, our waterproof grid. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, all waterproof and yeah, also yeah. the water jet, uh, the, the mm. powerful water jet from mm. any direction wouldn't damage our mover. Yeah. I see. Mm. One thing I'm very curious about, and a lot of people are also curious about is, what about the battery? So we choose a uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, battery instead of the lithium iron because uh, it lasts longer and it also operates safer. Th this is our battery actually. Mm. In our spec table, we specify like 1,500 charge recycles. But in the lab test, it can usually go around 2,000 uh, recharging cycles. And this number is actually three times of the lithium ion phosphate battery that are used by electronic movers actually. Mm. Uh, the capacity is also cheaper of uh, many other batteries mm. and you can see it's a very big. To enable fast charging, we upgrade the battery with tablet technology, reducing internal resistance. While the capacity slightly decreased, the improved energy efficiency ensures runtime remains unaffected. Also, lithium ion phosphate battery has an uh, outstanding thermal property. So, Lemon 1 can operate at minus 5 degrees up to 16 degrees in the summer outside. Wow, fantastic, huh? One last thing I wanted to talk to you about is a lot of people are curious about the LIMO team. So how long has this project been active and how many people are working for the company? Well, the Gao Wang Shu is our founder and he started LIMO two years ago with another two co-founders, Mandy and Jason. Currently, we have around 13 people and we have three office. One is in, the, in Beijing and one is here in Dongguan and one in the US. Beijing office just uh, um, is responsible for developing a product mm -hmm. because uh, there are many research institutes and many uh, expert talents in the, in the capital city. Here in Dongguan, it's just uh, close to the um, factory supply chain as we reach to the mass production process. Yeah. And um, we have some engineers and supply chain colleagues often come to Dongguan and just uh, work here. And also our marketing team is in Dongguan. And in the US, we also have has an office that runs a low test that adapts, adapt our mover to local weathers and different grass. Right, because the environments are always different. Right? Yeah, so, uh, like the, um, the scissor blade, when we tested it here, we didn't think the wet will be a big issue mm -hmm. because most mm -hmm. of the time we can use it. But when we bring it to the US in, for it's, CES, it's Oh, we're told from people from Florida that, that most of the time it's, of course, it's, the, the grass course. is wet. So we think it's very important to taste locally uh, in the US and in Europe. Okay, well, fascinating. Well, thank you so much, Vivi. It's been a real pleasure getting to know the ins and outs of the, what makes the Limo one so sleek and yet so smart.